Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. The KSM Show. All right, all right, all right, all right. Like, I, like I've been doing, you know, this, this time we are just hanging out with and celebrating some very, very, very important women in our country, man. Women who have, I brought what kind of saying, gravitas. Show some love, man. <laughs> <laughs> they have gravitas. And um, today is an honor and a privilege this evening to meet this lady who is currently the managing director of APSA. For those of you who don't know APSA, it used to be Barclays Bank. I'm sure you know upstairs Barclays Bank. And I'm going to be hanging out with her. And when she comes, I'll be telling stories that will get you more and more into the story. So in the meantime, put your hands together. Show some love for Mrs. Abna Ose. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Please, have a seat. Abna Ose in the house. <laughs> We're going to take a short commercial break when we come back. A bit upset. We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Hey, folks. I'm reporting right here live from Cactus Creek. This is where my next show is, man. On Father's Day, I'm doing a special performance called A Japa. This is not a Japa deal, though. My show is more confusing than the Japan deal. <laughs> and uh, trust me, folks, this show is not for lightweights. Uh -uh. It's just for those who have strong shock absorbers for fun. I don't want any participants here. Uh uh. And this UMPP. I don't want any sickle fans, man. And it's happening on the 18th of June, Saturday, and the next day, Sunday, the 19th of June, right here on Cactus Creek. And mind you, by the way, the language adult. PG-18. KSM, the Assembly Bar. He is the man. Oh, KSM, the Assembly Bar. He is dazzling his fans to his latest one-man special. A Japa, a Father's Day special. Dates 18th and 19th June. Time, 4 p.m. prompt. Very limited seats. Reserve your tickets now. 549 Okay, folks, for the package, that is the buffet and the KSM comedy show is 300 per person. And if you want to see only the show, that is 100 Ghana cities. Or if you decide you want only the buffet, it is 250 Ghana cities. Either way, I recommend the package, 300. Get a great buffet and see a great show. Hey Japa, the man is back. <laughs> You can freshen up at home and in your car. So, why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard, because when it comes to insuring your car and home, ba boom preco. Most of you are loving my jacket, Mr. Sao. Hey, me feel rough. The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0209 059215. So call as a pa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. The KSM Show. Thank you, folks. Thank you, we're back, we're back, we're back. And I'm very, very, very excited about the conversation today, man. Because I'm talking to this lady, and she happens to be the managing director of APSA, or if you will, former Barclays Bank. 
And before I even start the conversation, I want the, this camera is taking care of there. I want you to take a shot at my guest just before I start the lead <laughs> conversation. Take a, take a look at my guest here. Show some love, man. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted you to see her because when I saw her, I, I have to tell you, you know, when they told me I'm, I'm going to be speaking to the managing director of uh, Barclays Bank, I was suspecting, uh, you know, uh, somebody, I don't know, much older, bigger. I don't know what I was suspecting. You know, I almost walked by her, you know. And then the guy announced me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Abna, <laughs> do you get that a lot? I People do. see you and they, they mistake you that, oh, this, this is not the MD for APSA. <laughs> let, me, let me talk to her first and go and see the MD. Do you go through that a lot? I do, but first of all, thank you so much. This is really a, a privilege, you know, and a real honor to be here. Pleasure. But yes, you know, I, I get this very often. First, I'll say it's a compliment, right? <laughs> so for a lady who's just 10, 50, you know, to be told that I'm always looking very youthful, I think I shouldn't complain. Um, but I, I, just I, I, I just did in April. Ooh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not as long, young as I look, no. Wow. Well, yes. <laughs> um, but let me tell you a quick story. So I think it was perhaps just three, no, the beginning of um, this position. And typically I organize, you know, lunches or dinners for customers mm -hmm. and clients in my home. So one afternoon I was organizing lunch for some SME customers. Mm -hmm. I come downstairs and this you know, the man comes to me and says, oh, no, madame, no way. <laughs> and then I go, madame, no, no, any. You know, and they all best out laughing. <laughs> but I think the key is not to take any of this personal because yes. he didn't mean any harm. Yeah. He just had a preconceived view yes. of yeah. who the Barclays, it was Barclays at the time, at the MD time. should look yeah. like, you know. But yes, I think it's, it's more around what the outcome, what you're doing and not how you look. Fantastic, show some love, man. <laughs> Wow, wow. There are so many things to talk about. Um, but let me just start off uh, getting to become the MD of Barclays. Did you see an ad where you had hunted? How did you end up being where you are now? You know, it's a very interesting question because I've now been in the role, I think it's four years in August. Mm -hmm. But five years before I took on the role, which is nine years ago, you know, um, the role became vacant. Mm. And typically as it's done, there were three people called or shortlisted for the role. Mm -hmm. To cut a long story short, you know, I was flown to South Africa, this man interviews me, and immediately after 30 minutes tells me that, you know what, Abna, I think you're really good, but you're never gonna make CEO to my face. He says you're good, He says, but I'm you will never make I'll CEO. I'll never make CEO. Did he shall to tell you why? I think I was in shock, I froze. <laughs> so, he, 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 he spoke a lot, but I, I was frozen. I don't recall everything. But it was only one sentence I remember. He said, you have to first learn to lead yourself, lead others, then you lead leaders. But I was leading a large team, mm. so it didn't make sense to me. Mm. You know, so I left the place quite upset or disappointed, probably is a better word. And then I, I, I got back on the flight, came home, obviously told you know, um, my family about it. And then after I went through a mourning period, because you know you mourn mm -hmm, these things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, Literally. Mm -hmm. After my mourning period, then I decided that okay, um, I know I can do this. I've always wanted this, you know. So I'm going to work on me, you know. The rest is history. When the role became available or vacant again, you know, four years ago, I mean. And then you, you reapplied. You actually called to interview. Or to oh, okay. You, know, you okay. don't apply, so you are called to be assessed. So it's almost like as a short list of candidates. You know, but I think for me, the fact that the first time around, even though I was called, but I was told that I can't do it, you know, it's really a, a joy to finally get the role. Wow, <laughs> just love, man. <laughs> that, that's, quite, that's quite interesting. You, you went there, they told you, you you won't get the role. Oh, yes, to my face. To your face? Yes. You and, went through I, your and, morning. And I wasn't as mature. <laughs> so I can imagine how I looked. <laughs> so four years later, different person, I guess, interviewing you. The, some are the same because you, you go through there were about eight iterations. So there are assessments, several interviews with the local board, um, with the group, etc. So there are eight sets of things you go mm. through. But in that particular case, on the second one, the gentleman said, "No, you're not cut out for this." So now that you you are in the role, how does it feel? You know, um, first I'm thankful and grateful that you know I have the opportunity to lead such a systemically important organization in the country. But also, I realized that leadership isn't something you suddenly come into 
when you occupy the seat. Mm. It really is the summation of all the things you've been doing when nobody was looking at you. Really? You know, because I'm the first of four girls, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in a home where without knowing I had to role model the right behaviors and values for my younger sisters, you know, throughout um, my career, I've always been the kind of person people have looked up to. But then I think it's, I've sat on several boards, as you probably know, I'm also the chairperson of the Ghana Stock Exchange and the chairperson for um, the College of Advisory Health. But it's always about what you did before everybody noticed you. Mm. You know, so with my younger sisters, I always had to make sure that I was doing well in school, make sure that I was living right, make sure that, you know, I was doing things that they would like to emulate. But there were no cameras and nobody was watching. Mm. So you learn, you know, you fail, you learn, you do it again. So I built a lot of resilience. I built a lot of, you know, um, tenacity. You know, um, I built a lot of engagement skills. I figured out amongst my sisters, you know, who could get things done. So as an example, I was very timid as a child. You know, my mother says that when we got visitors, I'd hide in a bucket. Mm. But I have twin sisters right after me. One of them was a wild card. I mean, she was the one who changed the light bulbs. You know, she was full of energy. So you learn at that early age how to reallocate resources. But that's what leaders do. You know, so it's just taking all the things you've learned mm. and mm. bringing it to okay. the workplace. So by going through all of these things and their leadership skills, but because you are not aware, do you apply them as skills and do you talk about them at interviews? Because you didn't know. To be honest, in the first round of that particular one, I, didn't, I never got the chance to talk about it. But now that I am more mindful and mm -hmm. conscious mm -hmm. and aware, I talk about them a lot. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, growing up in Ghana, you learn to be a leader, right? At home, you are being sent to do stuff. You have to organize things, whether it's food for your parents or for the family. It's all leadership skills. You've got to do things on time, time management. So every day, we are all learning, mm. whether it's communicating, whether it's engaging, motivating. We do that at home. Mm. You know? mm. But for whatever reason, when we come to the office, we think we have to pack that and Is just that focus on the technical skills. Okay. But then later on, you begin to understand that actually it's all about people. It's all about how can I get things done through people? How do I have a vision that is shared? And how do I bring us all together for us to collectively you know, get to the point that we want. Mm, you know, mm. So it's just about the awareness, really. Mm, it's mm. both the hard skills you've learned and the soft. Mm. Wow. Now, taking over the empty position, you know, and it was Barclays and now it's APSA. You were part of that transition? And I was, how was it? And of all the things, the skills you've had, what do you have to apply to make that transition easier for, for the bank and for customers to understand? I think it's one of the things I'm most proud of, right? Because Barclays had been here for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. Good legacy, a household name, mm -hmm. you know, and we had to do a lot of work with all our stakeholders. Uh, my colleagues who are employees were anxious, they were concerned, what if they lose their jobs? Customers were used to Barclays, they mm -hmm. didn't know much about APSA. You know, you had to talk to everybody from the media, the regulators, you know, so it was a lot of constant communication, getting information, refining it, pulling everybody along and making sure that we work collectively. You know, because change, as you know, doesn't make everybody comfortable. Yeah. You know, so there was a lot of people that were jittery. But more importantly, it was around how do I lead? How do I show that we are in this together? And more importantly, that AFSA was going to be a much better institution than mm. Barclays. Mm. It took a lot of work. Well, I don't know, we'll talk about it, but what, what, was this, what was the reasoning behind, let's change from Barclays to APSA? I think a long story short, you know, um, the overall returns versus the capital that was invested, mm -hmm. you know, was not satisfactory for, for Barclays PLC. So that's the decision they took, not just for Ghana, but for Barclays in Africa. You know, but all things said, you know, I think APSA is doing excellently at the moment, you know, because since becoming APSA, we have moved from being number 10 in customer service to being number two. You know, last year, we were the best employee or best employer in the financial services industry. Two years ago, we were the best in governance. So things are moving up. Mm. You know, so it's mm. actually, we cannot complain. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other thing is, for a long time, people associated the Barclays brand with just a certain kind of people. Mm. But that's also not true, mm. right? Because we serve 
you know, corporate customers, the government, SMEs, households, and we actually the biggest and the best bank for SMEs. We've actually won that award at least more than five times over the last three or four years. Mm. Yes. Mm. So mm. we're really open for business. That's what <laughs> we do. <laughs> mm. 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 Regarding you and your, your, your personal style, your leadership thing, you know, what was the biggest thing for you to handle when you were going through that change? You know, uh, whether it's to customers, whether it's to clients, to businesses, for you, what did you find most challenging? A um, very good question. I think generally I'm an introvert, but I can be what they call an extroverted introvert. <laughs> so I do what I have to do and I do it with ease. So it was about opening up a lot more about me, not just the organization, mm. right? Because as a leader, you know, people have to get to know who you are as a person. Forget about the organization. You know, so I had to be at the forefront of this change. I had a of meetings with all manner of people, opening up, letting them know who I was and why they should believe that they were in safe hands. Mm. You know, so everything from going into social media, going on air, talking a lot more, just making people much more aware of the change that we're going to go through. I think that perhaps would have been out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but it was worth the learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Uh, I don't know. Being a woman, has that made this whole transformation better, you think? Or it doesn't matter, the institution, uh, APSA or Barclays is so strong that it doesn't matter who was there. But do you think that being a woman at the head at the time influenced any part of this? So I think I have to give credit also to the organization for the mm. structures that are there. But I believe that being a woman helped because you know you have a natural nurturing instinct. You're used to taking care of the husband, the children, and the mm. home in addition mm. to work. You know, so it makes, I think, a woman leader, you know, um, more caring, if I can use that word. Mm. And if you're going through such a huge transformation, you've got to show your stakeholders you care mm. and to be able to carry them along with you. So I think that helped. Mm. It will not be the only reason, but definitely well, it, it would be an advantage. Reasons. It was uh, an advantage. Uh, yes. Uh. You know, my, my nurturing side was, was a good one. Mm. Yes. Show some love, man. <laughs> And this is just, by the way, somebody said, and I'm not drifting to <laughs> politics or anything, but they think a woman will be the most qualified leader for Ghana. You share that sentiment? I think you can be a good leader, whether you're a man or a woman. Uh, I think a leader is irrespective of gender, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think if you display and exhibit the right leadership qualities that are required at that point in mm -hmm, time. Because mm -hmm. mind you, you can be a great leader at a particular point in time, but you may not be the suitable leader at another point in time. Mm -hmm. So I okay. do not, you know, I grew up, as I said, in a home where there were no boys, were just girls, of course, apart from my dad. And so I was never fully conscious of women can't do something and only men could do that till later on in oh, life. Oh, really? No, I wasn't. And I think it helped a lot, right? I didn't even know the limitations for them to have a, to take a toll on me, mm. you know. So I think a leader is somebody who's able, you know, to not just um, be at the forefront, you know, but also to be able to do things through people and carry them along, you know. And so whether you're a male or a female, I think is quite irrelevant. I think so. The leadership you know, trait is, is... The leadership trait is... not gender-based. It is, yes. It's gender agnostic, to be honest. You know, one of the things that I look forward to is when all of this fuss about women leaders will move from being a novelty to becoming a norm. Mm, mm, you know, mm. we, we, we're not there yet, right? I yeah. hope we get there soon. Yeah. Um, right now, as you speak, there's still a novelty. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't become a norm yet. Well, we hope it becomes uh, a norm, yeah. you know, sooner than later. Mm, yes. Mm, mm, mm. You have kids? I do. I have two sons. Two tw sons? Yes. Okay, okay. A 20 year old and a 16 year old. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look 20. <laughs> now I say you're flattering me. <laughs> but yes, thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I think the, the, the challenge of being a, a female professional and a leader is always about getting support both at the workplace and at mm. home. I think without support, it's very difficult. So perhaps if there was any young person listening to me, that would perhaps be the, my one takeaway for you. 
you need to have support. And I'm not going to define what support is, right? But in the workplace, if you're senior, you need people. I surround myself with people that are better than me. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not ashamed to say that, right? Mm -hmm. I think my team are excellent. You know, so when I'm recruiting, I'm looking for people who are smarter, wiser, but can also work as a team. Because you don't want individual players, you, you want a team. You know, so that's important to me. And at home, you also need help. I mean, imagine after a hard day's work, I have to go and go and sweep before I take a shower and sleep. Mm -hmm. Th that would be too much. So you need help both at work and at home. And I don't think it's embarrassing. I don't find that embarrassing at all. I think without that, without having that kind of family support and work support, it would be difficult, not impossible, but be a lot more difficult, you know, for mm -hmm. a woman to become a leader. Mm -hmm. We're hanging out with our brother. Show some love. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. When I come back, I'm going to get more into her philosophy of life. <laughs> you know, her beliefs in whatever strengthens her because she's a strong woman, man. So when we come back from the commercial break, it's going to be more exciting. Stick around. We'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, folks. Starting next week, Hallmark Oil Limited, in partnership with the A to Z auto servicing are going to be teaming up with the KSM show. Now, the idea is that we're going to introduce this amazing product called the Havolin Automobile Lubricants. And they're the best of the market when you're talking about lubricants. Havolin Lubricants, coming your way next week. You know, once upon a time, all travel began from Accra. But thanks to Passion Air, you can actually start your trip from Kumasi if you want to go from Kumasi to Wa or Wa to Kumasi, you are perfectly able to do that on Passion Air. Call their toll-free number, which is 0800-221-221. My name is Samuel Ishima. I'm head of distribution for Vanguard Assurance Company Limited. We've introduced the comprehensive policy that to ensure that families, friends, relatives who have their homes and their vehicles can combine the two and have one single insurance product that will give them the peace of mind to be able to enjoy what they do at home and also in the car as well. So all Ghanaians, we are appealing to you that there is a need to focus on your home and make sure there is adequate financial security protection cover for your home so that when you, in an event where you lose your home, you don't lose hope but Vanguard will be right behind you, stand by you, and make sure that you bounce back to life again. So if you are thinking about insuring both your home and your car, think about the home preensive. Nafa boom preko. You can enjoy your coffee at home. And in your car. So... Why insure just your car? Introducing Homeprehensive, a single insurance policy for both your car and home. Get Homeprehensive from Vanguard, because when it comes to insuring your car and home, for boom preco. Hey folks, I'm reporting right here live from Cactus Creek. This is where my next show is, man. On Father's Day, I'm doing a special performance called a Japa. This is not a Japa Dilo. My show is more confusing than the Japan deal. <laughs> and uh, trust me, folks, this show is not for lightweights. Uh -uh. It's just for those who have strong shock absorbers for fun. I don't want any participants fans here. Uh -uh. And this your MPP. I don't want any sickle fans, man. And it's happening on the 18th of June, Saturday, and the next day, Sunday, the 19th of June, right here on Cactus Creek. And mind you, by the way, the language adult. PG-18. KSM, the Beba. He is that Dazzling His Fans to his latest one-man special, to his latest one-man special, a Japa, a Father's Day special. Dates 18th and 19th June. Time 4 p.m. prompt. Very limited seats. Reserve your tickets now. 549 Okay, folks, for the package, that is the buffet and the KSM comedy show is 300 per person. And if you want to see only the show, that is 100 Ghana cities. Or if you decide you want only the buffet 
it is 250 Ghana cities. Either way, I recommend the package, 300. Get a great buffet and see a great show. Hey, Japa, the man is back. Most of you are loving my jacket. I am if a rough. The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call, 0209-059-215. So call as a pa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. The KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Today with Mrs. Abna Osei, who's the MD of APSA. And I'm very, I'm learning from you, you know. Sometimes I sit here and I have guests and they come and go, they come and go, but they don't know how much I'm absorbing. And I, I, I can tell that you're very, 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 should I use the word spiritual? <laughs> how can you tell by looking at someone they are spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you're focused, you're very centered. Let me change the word from spiritual to a very centered, Oh, you know, you, you, you have a, a certain orientation, a goal, and you don't mess with it. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm a Christian, and um, I'm also very purpose-driven. So um, my personal philosophy, actually, is to give other people's life a meaning. Give other people's life a, a meaning. meaning. Okay. And especially given the position that I hold, I have the opportunity to do so, right? whether from a work perspective or even from a personal perspective. Mm. So I do a lot of, of, of that. So whether it's um, helping younger people find a job, not necessarily in APSA, but elsewhere, mm. or helping somebody put together you know, a proposal, or officially helping you know, the lady who has a little kiosk now you know, moving on into having several kiosks or even mm. a shop, mm -hmm. you know, all that I find very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And above all, I think I have an opportunity to create more leaders because every leader has that opportunity, either by mentoring or coaching, to build other people up. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> so, as an individual or person, you know, when you talk about the principles that push you, what would you say were the two main things? Oh, that's difficult. Principles that you have that. I, I think one would be hard work. You know, when you're a child, you know, you learn about Cinderella, but life is not a fairy tale. Even Cinderella had to remove her shoes before midnight. Mm -hmm. So there's time and place, and it requires work. So first for me is hard work, because it's not a fairy tale. So that, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, if you don't work hard, you'll even be noticed. Mm -hmm. Forget about all the other things about visibility, networking, you know. You, you cannot just network and get a job or get an offer. Hard. You've got to get work hard because if I'm going to be, you know, recommending somebody, I have to be sure it's part of my own credibility I'm putting out there, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I have to be sure that if I recommend Akos, Akos is good to go. So hard work counts. I think the second one for me um, will be dissemination. You know, so as an individual or as a person, I think I don't give up. I'm super optimistic. You know, I'll try and try again. I told you about not getting the first CEO role. I mean, some will mourn for life and never resurrect. I resurrected, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and came back on board, you know. So I found out, you know, um, on this journey that worry is a useless investment. Worry? It's a useless investment. Why worry? It's a useless investment. Rather, use it to continuously and relentlessly learn build some relationships, even help, uh, help other people. That's more profitable to you and to society than just worrying. You know? So generally, I am very, 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 um, I, I'd say tenacious of purpose. I don't give up easily mm. at all. Mm. Regardless of what it is, mm. I'll uh, give it a try. Yeah. I've gotten one good soundbite from you. Worry is a useless investment. Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> it's a good sound, but I'm going to, I'm going to tweet it. 
But, so let's say, you know, after the first time and the guy just looked up to you and said, you're not cut out for this position. And then you went back four years later. I'm imagining, what yes, if? Five years later. Five years later. Mm -hmm. What if at five years you had worse? To be mm -hmm. honest, I put in the work. I think one is humility. Mm -hmm. Feedback is very important, right? It's, it's, it's a data point. So if you're open to feedback and you take it as data, you become better, everyone. So is that humility and acknowledging that actually maybe I was good at what I was doing, but I'm not good for the next level. Mm -hmm. So I finally got that. And then I put in the work. There were so many things I did. You know, I got a coach. I learned about other things. I learned to even relax, you know. I learned to become more relatable. There's a lot everybody can learn. So whilst I'm really happy that I got the job, I also wasn't too surprised because I put in the work. Mm -hmm. You prepared for I it? I did, oh my God. You know, victory likes preparation. I prepared, like, I, like it was World Cup. Wow. But I wasn't preparing yeah. for Barclays MD. I think that's the point. I was preparing to become an MD or CEO somewhere, wherever. I didn't know the place. So was this specifically for Barclays? No, 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 no. I, I didn't You were just preparing I was just preparing be... for that opportunity because I figured out, well, I didn't figure out, I learned the hard way that when I had the first opportunity, I wasn't ready. Mm. So even though I had to mourn it, on hindsight, I wasn't ready. Mm. And by the time I took on this role, the, 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 it, there was no ambiguity, you know, based on the feedback I got, you know, that I was ready now, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing. And I really want to thank, of course, I thank God for that. And I thank everybody who supported me. And I thank my clients, my colleagues, you know, because it's been amazing. It doesn't mean there hasn't been challenges. There's always challenges mm -hmm. on this journey, mm -hmm. right? But overall, it's been amazing. What have been some of your challenges? Hmm. I want to see what you consider <laughs> a challenge. So let me tell you three quick ones. Yeah. So one was much earlier in my career. I was at a different bank. I was pregnant with my first child. I came back from maternity leave, and my director had moved me to the proverbial archives. And you know, as a woman, when that happens, it's like, oh my God, you are sidelined. You know, he had asked me when I was pregnant to go to go as an expatriate to a different country. And I said to him that I was pregnant and I couldn't go. I don't think he took it well. So for me, I thought that was my punishment. Later in life, I realized that it was to grow me for bigger and better opportunities. Mm. But at the time, it was that bad, mm. you know, because you're told you're top talent and then you're moved to a place where talent and moved to. So mm. that was a big one for me. The second one was, then I was a corporate director at Barclays. Um, halfway through the year, we had exceeded our targets for the year. I'd go on vacation, come back, and unfortunately, a client, you know, had not met the obligation. This, back in the day, was about $25 million, a lot of money in CDs. So um, the client literally bolted with the money. Mm. I was thinking, that ends my banking career. No bonus. Where am I going? And the people that I was working with, they're all looking up to me. You know, the men who were in charge were crying. Mm. I'd come to work, you know, polished face, looking strong, go home and cry and pray. <laughs> 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 and then continue the journey, you know. But I think for me, I learned that it's not what happens to you that matters. It's what you do, how you respond to what matters. It's how you respond to what has happened to you that, that matters. matters. And that's what I did, right? So I decided at the time to make sure that I would absorb all of them from facing whoever. So I'll go on the calls, explain over and again, you know, took the flag, you know, was downgraded, you know, at the end of the year. But you know, all things work together for the good for them that love the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Eventually, you know, um, a group CEO visits the country, they're looking for talent, I'm not aware, he spots me, sees me and says, based on everything he's seen me do, and even the fact that I was able to bounce back after the rather unfortunate event, that I was the kind of person who would like to see you do bigger things. Mm. The rest is history. Mm. Yes. Wow. wow. Give it up, give it up, give it up. And something you said that I, I really, really think uh, the youth out there that are listening, something you should never forget, she told you for free. She said, it's not what has happened to you. It's not the event that has happened to you, but how do you choose to respond to that event? Absolutely. That decides everything. Absolutely. And I said that wasn't enough. When I became the, the CEO of, of Barclays before we became APSA, six months down the line, we had a problem and we woke up and there was this, you know, Barclays has quoted frivolous rates. 
six months into the role, you can imagine everybody was jumping up and down. But because of some of the experiences that I had been through, I was very calm. I knew it would be solved, I didn't know how. But I had now grown to realize that challenges happen and we are problem solvers, otherwise I won't have a job. So you don't wish that on anybody. Mm -hmm. But when there's an issue, the leader has to take center stage and together with the team solve it, or at least try to do so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. wow. <laughs> Let, let, me, let me get uh, more of the personal. Who is who's your dad? Oh, my dad is dead. Uh -huh. But he was called SK Appear. SK Appear? SK Appear. Okay. Yeah, okay. He, he used to be a banker. Um, yes, he, he uh, I think he, when I was growing up, he was um, the deputy CEO for then SSB. And okay. then he went to the central bank, he became deputy governor at some point. Went to Ministry of Finance as a deputy governor. He became chairman of Commercial Bank. He worked elsewhere. That was your dad. I think I know him. That was my dad. Okay. But okay. my dad, you know, we grew up in a home where what my parents had wasn't for us. So there was no ambiguity around if you don't work hard, you're on your own. <laughs> Something I'm trying to teach my children, they look at me like, yes, mom. <laughs> but I keep reminding them what you have or what your dad and I have is not yours. I think my parents made it very clear from the beginning. Mm. You Your know, mom as well? Your mom? My, my mom, no, my mom, um, she's there. My, my mom is like the most amazing woman ever, right? She's always praying. So even if I called and said, I have issues, doesn't matter what the issue is. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and as little as that sounds, it's such an encouraging statement because I know she is. It's not like a mm -hmm. rhyme, mm -hmm. you know. So my mom is an amazing woman. She looked after all her siblings. What's her name? Oh, she's called Elizabeth Appiah. She's yeah. a lovely, she's warm. She's, she's like mom one. I don't think there's another mom like mine. Oh, she, yeah. She's simply amazing. Seriously, yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she's mom to a lot of people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she's amazing. She's amazing. So they, they consciously made you aware that what we have, what, it wasn't it, lost it's, on it's, us. It's not for you, the kids? Yes, and they would tell us that if you don't do well, the rest will do well and they'll leave you <laughs> on your own, which felt a bit frightening when you're a child, <laughs> right? You know, so thankfully, and by God's grace, right, so my sisters, thankfully, are all doing well. I have a sister who is a CEO of an oil firm. I have one who is working in um, one of the UN places as a director, and I have one who is a partner in a law firm. Wow. And it's not because we are the best and the brightest. So it's not lost on me. You know, it's not because there are people who are smarter, sharper mm -hmm. than so us. So it's because? I think it's a matter of maybe three key things. One was my dad kept telling us that we could be anything. That was one. There was no ambiguity that you could be anything you wanted to do. The second one that my mother was always praying. So I believe we have a lot of grace. Mm. <laughs> so I believe that a lot. That's my personal belief, you know. And the third, one was that we learned to put in the hard work. Mm. So as basic as it sounds, you know, I'm quite a simple person. So other things would have added to, I think these three are the fundamentals, right? Mm. Because if you tell somebody when they are young that, you know, they can be, make something of themselves, then the probability or the likelihood of them believing in themselves is a lot higher. Remember I said I was a timid child. So if timid me can now run one of the largest banks, then all the non-timid people out there, <laughs> they can run the country. Because <laughs> yeah. I was timid. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it helps to have that encouragement even was from a young age. Was there any point in your life where you realized, I, I've, I've gotten over this timidity thing? And, and when was that? I think, I, I'm not sure I know the exact point. But I think over time, a number of things gave me confidence. So um, one was us. I did well in school, people began looking up to me, mm -hmm. so that would, would have been mm -hmm. one. Um, the second was as I started you know, working, um, I was also doing very well. So I joined, I was one of the people that was told was doing well. So I think all these little things make you realize that you're not as bad as you think you are. Mm. And that's why encouragement mm. for me is a very important mm. thing, right? Mm. Because you can have somebody who is excellent, but they think very lowly of themselves. You know, so for me, I think it helped. I'm not sure at what point, but if I look back, perhaps also understanding more practically what my Christian work was all about. 
you know, so all of a sudden I stopped, I, I began to believe that it was more than just reading the scriptures. I could apply them, right? Mm -hmm. And so if he says, I can do all things, I can, I can at least really try, things, I can yeah. try. And also if you get it wrong, it's not the end of the world. You know, sometimes I wish I knew some of these things much earlier in life, mm -hmm. you know, because I think I wouldn't, I didn't take much risk when I was much younger. You know, I was the kind who would just stay on course, you know, not very left or right. You know, I was never beaten as a child, I should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I was never beaten as a child. I'd do what she said I should do, nothing more, not even challenge you. You know. So you didn't give anybody the cause to beat you or no, just, no, no, I, I, they just didn't beat you? I didn't give you the cause because I, I would do exactly what you said I should do. Well, I would even challenge the state to school. It, it, well. It's not the right thing as well. So I'm not advocating <laughs> yeah. people do that. But it's just because I couldn't take any risks there, right? Hmm. So it's all about getting out of your comfort zone as well. You know, learning new things. You know, dare to be different. You know, I, I don't know if it rained here, but it really rained in Accra, mm -hmm. you know, and when I woke up, obviously I didn't feel like getting out of bed. And I was just thinking to myself, ah, would Usain Bolt say that to himself? No. When he was running, no matter how the day looked like, I'm sure he would like, get out of bed, you've got this ambition, go back on the tracks, run, you know, you prepare, you know, so you put in the work. And as you continue, it becomes easy. It's no longer like work. Mm -hmm. I don't find mm -hmm. my work as work because I love what I do. Mm. Because ultimately, it gives me the opportunity, yeah. you know, to be, as I said to you, give other people's life a meaning, whether privately or professionally. And I love that, you know. So yes, there are challenges, but for me, it's not the end of the world. So for young people, I think, you know, you should always remember to put in the work. I think that's important. In today's world, you know, because of social media, fast food, mm -hmm. you know, you want everything immediately. It doesn't work like that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. You know, it, it takes a bit of work. But once you do that, you have to also differentiate yourself from the rest. If you're supposed to bring in, you know, 10 accounts, why don't you think of bringing 20? Mm -hmm. You end at 15. So you're doing over and above expectations. And then you have to be deliberate. You know, things just don't happen. I told you how when I just allowed myself, I didn't get the job. So I figured out that you better sit up and do something about it. When you do, whether it's a job, whatever it is that your goal is, mm -hmm. it's actually doable. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't give up. You put in the work. Fantastic. What advice do you give to our current generation who have all, I call them, the microwave mentality? Put it in, punch three seconds, <laughs> five minutes, and then you come back done. And you're talking about the need for hard work, putting in the time, the energy, how? You know, experience and exposure makes a difference. So you could be the smartest person, young person, which is good, with lots of creative ideas. They don't actually even know the status quo to even observe it. So that's also good. I have a lot of millennial friends and millennial colleagues as mm -hmm. well. But it's about making sure that you also gain the experience. You know, you just, life is not about just putting food in the microwave. Sometimes you've got to boil the food, mm -hmm. wait for it to cool, mm -hmm. pound it, make the soup. Mm -hmm. Not everything is microwavable. Thank you. And that's really critical. But it doesn't mean you have to wait till you're 50 before you lead an organization. Mm -hmm. You could, if you finish school at 20, who knows, you could lead at 30 or even 35. But it depends on what you do, you know. So whatever you do, basics first, you put in the work. And then you help others along the journey. You know, you, you should be thinking of just me. Because in any case, if you are not letting others come up, yeah. you never get the opportunity to rise as well. So that's one of the biggest things. I think they are generally very good at networking, so they don't need that advice. Mm -hmm. you know, but that's also critical, especially if you're an introvert. You've got to go out of your way you know, to be approachable you know, and relatable. And that's also equally important. But I honestly believe that without putting in the work, all the rest, they're like trimmings. You know, because even to be visible, right, it means your work has to be better than somebody's own. So you still have to put in the work. To network, you can't just be lying in bed. Even if it means taking your tablet and being on social media, it's also work. Mm -hmm. So hard work doesn't mean farming or pounding food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it just means get, get up and get something done. Mm -hmm. And you should have a dream. Young people should have a dream, you know. And if you have a setback, it's not the end of the world. You try again. As simple as it sounds, you try again eventually you get better. Show some love, man. <laughs> and I, I really, really, really hope that the youth will pay extra, extra attention, you know. This is what it takes. Nothing comes from the silver platter. 
He says, go like yeah. this when you just put in a punch in the microwave. Sometimes you may have to boil something, do something to it, that, this, do that, before you bring microwave. So please, take your time <laughs> and go through the process. <laughs> Abra, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such an inspiring uh, I was checking the faces of my crew and people here, and I, I can tell they are all absorbing. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for the opportunity as well. My pleasure. And just right. to say, if Timid Abna can run a bank, everybody can achieve their dream. Oh, wow. One more time, man. Thank you. <laughs> okay, folks, you've come to the end of another exciting edition. I hope you guys have learned so much, as you should do. Some of us, we are learning, even though our time has passed, no cry raise you. So how much less those of you who are now getting into it. So thank you all for joining us. We're gonna sign off now. And until I come back next week, KSM as I always sign off. We oh, are goodness. out of here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>